Okay. I am the education manager right now for the Association for the Advancement of Sustainability in Higher Education, and I will not say that title again. It's called ASHI. That's what most people know it as. Um, and it is an organization that does quite a few different things. I'm going to go through a set of slides, but then mostly I want to introduce you to the, um, I have to find the right pair of glasses, to the Student Resource Center. Um, we do a lot of work with students on campuses, colleges and universities. Uh, most of you will be moving on into that platform or that venue, so I want you to know the kinds of uh, resources that we have. We just actually finished our, our own national conference about three weeks ago, and we had a student summit there of college and university students. Uh, we had 550 students who did service projects, who uh, basically challenged faculty to begin integrating sustainability into curriculum. My job is to work with faculty on the college and university campuses to try to get them to start to uh, infuse, integrate, transform the curriculum so that it addresses the issues that you know are, are really important. So I also work with the ACU PCC. That was described earlier in the Paul Smith's um, slideshow. It's the American College and University's President's Climate Commitment. We really like long titles. I don't know whether it makes us feel important. I don't know. ACU PCC works with presidents and the leadership on college and university campuses. I work for both organizations. I have a contract with ACU PCC to try to work with chief academic officers who are the ones who can give the incentives, the rewards, and the guidance to faculty to make the changes. So ACHI, um, this, these are our four pillars. There are four goals, what we try to do every day with everything that we do. One is to advance sustainability. What that means, we are pushing for transformation, a sustainability transformation, as all of you are. Um, one of the ways that we do that is to become a thought leader. So we are trying to organize and transform the way that people think about climate and about sustainability. One of the ways we do that, we have a very huge website, um, and that's the link. Invaluable resources are there. There are curriculum, co-curricular, best practices, profiles of uh, colleges and universities that are doing great work, professional development. You can go there and just about get anything. We try to engage community. That's why I was hired, to try to engage the faculty community around change. One of the, uh, we just had our conference in Pittsburgh, but the next one and an even bigger youth summit that you all should think about attending is in Los Angeles, and it's going to be awesome, mostly because it's in Los Angeles at the very green convention center they have there. This year, one of the things that we did was introduce art as a form of teaching about climate and also about educating the public. Um, and Aisha actually brought my son over, who's a graffiti artist to do a huge piece of graffiti on, one, on a wall that was sold at the end of the conference to people. The LA conference will have even more of that because it was so popular in trying to get people, you were, yeah, did you get to see the wall? I did. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it went fast. <laughs> he was happy. <laughs> anyway, um, we will be doing a lot of engaging art and music and uh, performances to go along with the next conference because people loved it. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, how do we shape a sustainable world? Really, I mean, it is, <laughs> it is a daunting prospect. But every time I come to this summit, and I have to thank Jen and Carrie and Stephanie for inviting me th uh, three years in a row now. Um, Carrie and Jen were both graduate students with me uh, while I was at Antioch, and our relationship continues through this youth summit. I'm just very excited about coming here every time. I leave energized and ready to move forward. We need skills, we need knowledge, we need habits of mind. We have to be changing the way that we think about ourselves in the world because of these things, which you all know already. So, three focuses from ACHI, just to give you a sense of who we are. Engaging leadership. 
nothing's going to happen if the presidents and the leadership in colleges and universities does not come on board. Same thing with green schools, K through 12. If the leadership is not on board, the changes remain small, significant, but small. If we really want to transform the way that we're educating our public, we have to engage the leadership as well as the students who are the clients. And um, we also have to engage the deliverers who are the faculty. So faculty commons and community is one way that we're getting ready to engage faculty. I'm creating a very interactive community-based site for faculty that brings case studies and interviews and um, faculty who will submit to my provocative questions about how education has to change. So rather than just putting the case study up there, I really want to challenge people to challenge other faculty to make changes. Curricular resources, we are uh, providing stipends for faculty to be to come on and work with me, actually, as faculty fellows. Our national conference, and we do a lot of professional development. STARS is how most people know us. It is the sustainability tracking assessment and rating system. Pretty clever, huh? Taking those words and creating another word. Anyway, it sticks in people's minds. Um, we work with the U.S. Green Building Council on their LEED certification. They are more interested in the facilities and operations side. We want to integrate both education, faculty, uh, co-curricular uh, work that happens, and community work that happens on campuses. This is a rating system that's being used by about 1,200 schools right now. It's non-judgmental. It just really gives us a guide with which we can change and move and build and educate. One of the reasons sustainability is becoming very popular on college campuses is because students are asking for it. So when they come in to apply for schools, and you should all do this, do it with no holes barred. <laughs> Go in and say, does your campus do sustainability well? And that changes the way colleges do business because they need you. They need you. <laughs> As applicants, 64% of the respondents to the Princeton Review survey said that they were looking at colleges' green, or green commitment or commitment to the environment. 23% said that they, it would very much impact their um, acceptance, I mean, their acceptance of a school that accepted them. I was at a meeting a week ago with 120 presidents and uh, chief academic officers, and they told me that about 40 to 50 percent of the curricular change that's happening on campuses is student initi initiated. So as leaders, you have to step up and ask for this kind of change. I can see that it's going to come from you. As soon as you become voters, our political system is going to change and start recognizing climate change and sustainability as one of the goals for our, the government. Right now, you have huge influence in colleges and universities because you are demanding that those colleges and universities change and step up to the bat. I also looked at a workplace employers saying, when they hire, they are, 60% of them are expecting students to understand the challenges that are coming up on environmental sustainability, public health, and human rights. All three of those things combine to create an approach to sustainability. If the workplace is asking for it, you're asking for it, and leadership engages, colleges and universities are going to change. And they will be there as platforms for you to be able to get the skills and the training and the knowledge and the experience to work to go into the workforce and make the changes that have to happen. We have 18 million students in our colleges and universities. We have 1.2 million faculty. 
David Orr said, and I don't know why his name dropped off of here, but I probably did that. The real challenge we face in embracing more sustainable future rests in our ability to educate students differently. He's saying, as it are all of you, when you go into colleges and universities, we have to combine intellectual work with hands-on experience. That workplace uh, survey that I just talked about, they're all saying 84% of the employers said they wanted people who, who could come in with intellectual skills, but also who had real world experiences in environmental, in, in meeting environmental challenges. These two are examples of what's happening on a campus as a, as a result of student initiation. Over here, um, this one's from the University of Washington, St. Louis. The students wanted a place where they could gather, study, and um, socialize that was a lead platinum. So that's what this is, a new building. And over here is a building, and I'm, I just totally blanked on the campus. So it's going to come back to me, but it's not there right now. This is a living building challenge. This is a dorm that has been created by students. They, they designed it. They live in it. They do the research in it and they communicate about it. These are all the places that it has to be infused or integrated. These are all the ways that we do education that have to transform. Okay, This is uh, an example from our website of a student-initiated pro project. Um, these guys won our award this year for student-initiated programs. Uh, it's on the University of Alberta campus up in Canada. Um, just notice the type is different on each one of those. <laughs> These two students in the front said, we're going to engage the entire community here, the entire university in a dialogue that challenges the curricular change. So they engaged the faculty, the staff, facilities and operations, and, and the student body in a set of dialogue um, plenaries that actually charted a strategic change for the campus over five years. And it's, in, it's starting to process now. We're a membership organization. You can become a member as a student. It's not very expensive. But most people join as institutions. If your college or university is a member, you are a member. So if you're from a college or a university that's an AG member, we have a lot of people who don't realize that they, can co they come in with their email address and have access to all the features that are available. So this is the AG website. And I just wanted to show it to you. Um, when they, when my, the staff found out I was coming here, they said, ooh, get them to publicize their efforts. So even if you're from a high school or a school that's doing green work, you can go into this site and publicize your efforts. And I'm going to scroll down and show you. This shows you how to create an account, whether you're in, you can find out if your institution's a member. Whoop. If you've done a sustainability assessment, which is that STARS process, um, you can go in and get a hold of the technical manual. These assessments work also for K through 12 schools. In fact, I'm working with the Green School Network right now, K through 12, trying to get them to adopt something like the STARS process for, get, for K through 12 schools to assess how they're moving towards sustainability. Volunteering, but this is the place that they wanted you to pay attention to, and that is to publicize your efforts. We have student diaries, the online um, with places where students input, upload all of the things that they're doing in their school, whether you're from a high school or a college or uh, a different K through 12 school. You can put your work up online and people interact with it. You can apply for an award, submit your research papers, and then we will spotlight your sustainability initiatives on your campus. And that rolls on our front page. So we have a place where their campus sustainability projects are constantly being updated. OK. You can meet other students online. There's a Facebook page, a LinkedIn page, a Twitter um, section of the, of the website. That's what's led a lot of the students to do the very good work that they're doing right now because they know other students are supporting them. And those students can talk to each other online about their different projects and help each other out. 
So I'm just going to leave you with the website. Whoop. Yeah. Um, as a non-member, you have access to all of these things. So when you go home tonight, I'm sure you're going to click into the AG website. Now, at some point <laughs> in time, go to the Student Resource Center. I think you'll be amazed by what's there. And I just want to offer it to you because it changes all the time. And it offers lots of resources for you and connects you to other people who are doing this very good work. So are there questions about AG? Yes. Yes, it's actually just www.aashe.org. And then you just put in, you know, in the finder, student resources. Yeah. What advice do you have for high school students? Yeah. If you, we, ha we will have, within a month, an academic uh, programs database. Where, so you can go in as a high school student who's graduating and see what's happening on different campuses before you go to visit. So I would encourage you, if you're a high school student who's looking for a campus that's active in sustainability, that you go to our website, just scroll through the different programs that are um, highlighted on the bulletin, which is available to non-members, and also go into the academic uh, programs resource base and you can put in I want a program that looks at energy efficiency and it'll um, search for you and find you a set of five to ten schools that will focus on that during your undergraduate or your graduate degree. So, or you can call me and I can direct you. <laughs> We're actually all available. So when you go online, you can find one of us and send us an email, and you'll get a response within the day. So, there are 35 of us, and we are everywhere across the country. So we don't have a central, we actually have a central office, but only the executive director's there. So there's probably one of us somewhere in your region that's available to you to talk to.